The Washington State Cougars know they must win on the road if they want to play in another bowl game this season. And playing in Boise tonight should be no problem, right? Not so fast. The Broncos came ready to play. But the Cougars are ready to play a little football, and oh, you gotta love the Smurf turf. Don't adjust your sets. It's really that color. See, Birnbaum, though, loses the snap in the, their first drive. Broncos recover and would take an early 7-0 lead. After trailing 7-6 at the half, though, the Cougars muff a punt. Turnovers would kill the Cougars. They would capitalize with a three-yard touchdown by Aaron Hurley. WSU now trails 14-6. But on the ensuing kickoff, D. Morancola is seeing orange. He scampers along the sideline untouched and has only one man to beat. Guess who it is? The kicker, please! I don't think so. 88 yards, the Cougars close the gap, 14-13. Later in the fourth, the Cougars did two field goals and Birnbaum hits Leeford Hackett with a quick pass and, oh, side release, 27-14 lead. Boise State wouldn't call it quits. They would crawl within six, but Dewan Gilmore says, sorry, Broncos, you little outmatched. This 79-yard touch touchdown run up the gut seals it. It wasn't like last year's 58-0 final, but the Crimson and Gray will take the W. Washington State wins 33-21. They go 2-0 and play next week in Pullman against Idaho. We, we, we led Boise State in that, in that game a lot, and they took advantage of it, and that's what a team's supposed to do. But, you know, just, just getting out of here alive, you know, that's still, yeah, we have our confidence, you know. So we're going to go home this weekend, and this week practice hard, and get ready for Idaho. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. I'm not saying it was pretty. I'm not saying we, but we won. Uh, we had a great learning experience playing in a hostile environment, being down, coming from behind. We've never come from behind before like that. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a great learning experience. In Joe Paterno's great career, he has two national championships, 18 bowl wins, which is more than any other coach in history, and has an undefeated team in each decade that he has coached. And one milestone still remains. Joe Paul looking for win number 300. And with Bowling Green coming into State College, it was almost a given that today would be the day. Penn State's Cordell Mitchell raced 77 yards for a touchdown on the first Cordell place in scrimmage, and he takes this one in from 16 yards out for his second score of the day. Mitchell had 104 yards on the ground. Joe Paw in his ninth rig, Nittany Lions, steamrolled the Falcons, and Joe, Joe Paterno becomes the fastest coach to win 300 games, and he only needs 24 games to become the all-time Division I wins leader. After losing big last week to Idaho in the Kibbe Dome, the Eastern Eagles return home for the first time this season, and what was also their big sky opener. The Eagles trying to bounce back against Portland State, and it would be a wild one in Cheney. In the fourth quarter, both teams locked at 17. Bashir Levingston, a senior transfer from Utah State, hits the gap and says, it's been fun, but I gotta go. 68 yards, his second of the night. Eastern leads 24-17. Minutes later, Vikings quarterback Jim Blanchard sneaks in from a yard out, and the score is tied at 24. Eastern had a chance to win it, though. Nine seconds remaining. Josh Atwood attempted chip, shot 25-yarder. Uh, you got to be kidding me. No good. We're heading for overtime. In OT, after Atwood hit a 40-yard field goal, remember, it's not sudden death, Blanchard hits Art Williams, and Art does the rest. He sprints 23 yards, diving in the end zone, and Eastern loses a heartbreaker to Portland State, 30-27. to Eastern now 0-2 on the season. The Whitworth Pirates took the field for the first time this year, taking on the NAIA 8th-ranked Western Oregon Wolves. The Wolves would eat up the ground game. Jason Tyrelli had a huge day with 185 yards rushing. Western Oregon led 7-3 after one. But Josh Parbin also had a big day, placing this pass perfectly to Ty McGregor in the corner of the end zone. Pirates would miss the two-point conversion, though. Whitworth now within five. With the 49 lead in the second quarter, quarterback Adam Bickler rolls out and finds Rick Miles, who gets stopped short of the goal line. That would set up a one-yard Bickler touchdown run. Whitworth would go on to score 21 in the second half, but it's not enough. Western Oregon escapes 38-30. to Mark McGuire went homeless in today's game against Houston, and that means he's still at 62. So Sammy Sosa, who ended the day with 59, had a chance to gain some ground. Chicago fans were on their feet for the main event at Wrigley and slamming Sammy. Coming through with his 60th home run of the season. And he joined such company as the Babe, Maris, and McGuire's, the only ones to hit 60 home runs in a single season. Sosa has 13 games remaining to try and overtake McGuire for the home run lead. Griffey came in the day with 999 RBIs, and he rips this base hit to get his 1,000th and 1,001 RBI in this, on his career. But he's not done. Griffey going deep for 52 home runs on the season in the Mariners. Go on to sweep the, the Twins 12 to 7. Mariners take both games in the Metrodome. 
Spokane Chiefs opened the Western Hockey League schedule on the 25th, but tonight they were looking for their first win of the preseason. Don't tell these guys it's the preseason. Dropping the gloves early. But the game was ugly early. It was scoreless for the first 30 minutes. Nice save. Mike Lankucha makes a nice save, showing Brad Sutherland. In the second period, was Cooney up 1-0. Spokane, Simon Joe makes a sweet centering pass to Mason Wallen. Goalie Brian Defoe never saw it. The Chiefs go on to win their first preseason game, 4-3. Well, that's it for sports. More news after the break.